Southeast Asia is currently facing some of the most complex geopolitical issues of our time. There's the maritime dispute over the South China Sea, the tussle between the U.S. and China, the Myanmar crisis, and many others that negatively impact the quality of life in the region. Now, obviously, these issues require leaders to talk, and leaders are doing exactly just that here in the beautiful island of Labuan Pajo, Indonesia. Journalists is covering this year's Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN Summit, closely look at how leaders tackle the various issues concerning China. But Beijing and Taiwan's escalating tensions are not mentioned at all in this year's chairman's message. At best, the issue folds into sentences that talk about upholding regionalism and multilateralism or commitment to international law. The statement on the tensions in the South China Sea sings an old tune which revolves mostly about exercising self-restraint in the conduct of activities that would escalate disputes in the area. ASEAN leaders, however, are able to explicitly point out that Russia should comply with the UN Charter and international law in its war with Ukraine. Leaders are also able to stress their concern over developments in the Middle East and call for a peaceful dialogue among concerned parties conducting missile tests in the Korean Peninsula. But for the Myanmar crisis, frustration continues to mount, effectively putting into question the effectiveness of ASEAN. Indonesian President Joko Widodo goes as far as saying that Myanmar has made no progress on its five-point ASEAN peace plan. In his frank opening address, Jokowi asks, Is ASEAN going to be a mere bystander? Is it going to do nothing? And is it capable of being a driver of peace and growth? On the sidelines of the summit, Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim expresses his disappointment over the lack of meaningful and real progress in implementing the five-point peace consensus. The disparity between what is said in joint statements and what is said on the sidelines are glaring. Now, with these vaguely worded statements, one would think that, you know, you could have just literally sent over an email. But then again, geopolitics is a battle of optics. The ASEAN summit is mostly about optics. We don't get to see the tedious diplomatic processes, but the summit makes it a point for the world to see the images like the traditional ASEAN handshake and the videos of leaders enjoying the sunset. All these to show the world the prosperity of the $3.7 trillion regional bloc. Oh, very calm, very smooth. We're looking forward to seeing the sunset. Clear your head so that you can go back to work and refresh. Now romantic. And romantic. <laughs> Quite happy and um, it's, it's our first time here in Abon Bajo. So um, yeah, just very happy to be on this boat. While the complex geopolitical tensions involving global superpowers remain unresolved, the ASEAN summit was able to unite against other issues including action against human trafficking that is being run by a cryptocurrency mafia. The ASEAN summit also resulted in a declaration of the One Health Initiative, which aims to develop linkages and mechanisms in the health sector to immediately act on infectious diseases. It was also able to adopt the roadmap for Timor-Leste's full membership into ASEAN, a declaration on developing the region's electric vehicle system and regional payment connectivity were also adopted. It's worth noting, however, that these issues do not involve contesting claims or interests. Who would say no against efforts to curb human trafficking or pro-environment measures? The ASEAN economy is expected to grow 4.7% this year and 5% in 2024, thanks to strong domestic consumption, net exports, and its strong services sector. Geopolitical risks, however, continue to constantly disrupt supply chains and threaten growth. For a region that's both united and divided, one can only imagine the difficult conversations that happen behind closed doors. Ralph Rivas Rappler, Labuan Pajo, Indonesia.